is Scott occupying his time now? Well, right now, my little man and I drove here for today from, from Indiana. We'll spend the night tonight, drive back to Indiana tomorrow, get in our motor home, drive to a baseball tournament about an hour away, camp. My daughter and wife are going to a three-day volleyball tournament down in Louisville, play Saturday with him, go down and watch her play on Saturday afternoon and evening, come back Sunday, play. Maybe we'll meet up back at home at some point. So that's how we're occupying our time, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. What was it like being in a convertible today and hearing that ovation for you? No, it was it was great. We were just talking about it with Martin over there that uh, you know this is my first time actually doing that. You know, last year we came back and I got the short straw to try to fire a grenade to Nolan from the uh, concourse there in center field. But um, and that that was fantastic in its own right because it's kind of a point in time, you know, that uh, it's strange times, but. Uh, Getting back out here and, and getting that convertible and riding around and having my camera out and video and sending some of that to my wife and my daughter without having indigestion and stress about the game that's pending, you know, is pretty cool. It's probably amazing to think that even after all these years, you are so still loved in this town and you will always be. Well, thank you. I don't. Uh, I, I don't want that to change by any means. I, I hope I hope you're correct uh, in, in that. But I, I truly enjoy playing here. Obviously, this is a fantastic place to play, and, and great people. I love coming back, and and uh, now you know my son growing up and get into baseball a little bit more. He's he's excited about it. But you know I, I don't I didn't have a I tried to show up and play and, and do the best I could, and, and uh, I appreciate everybody you know supporting me. So the day Nolan Arenado signed here, everybody started talking, wow, another gold glove third baseman. You guys are different. How would you compare your styles defending a third? Well, I don't know. Um, you know, he, he's, uh, he, he's, he's really he's smooth. He's really smooth. He's really light on his feet, moves around really well. I think I kind of tackled the ball a little bit more, tried to play a little big and linear, and, and you know, and he, he gets around and really has some good hands and, and handles himself very well and, and, and moves, moves, moves very, very well over there. Final thought. I know it, you don't dwell on it, but it has to be in the back of your mind. The way things have trended with the National Baseball Hall of Fame voting, things look good for you. What are your emotions about that? That things, things look good. You know that's that's where it's that's where it's gone. You know it was a uh, it's a situation again. My my son's into it. He's excited about it. He watches it and tries to follow it a little bit and, and well quite a bit when it gets down to it. But it's it's nothing that that I can control or our family can, can control. But you know I've had some luck going in the right direction. Uh, obviously as as all the years have gone, you try to hang on in the first year on a tough ballot and then. Second year is a, a tough battle with Mariano Rivera, and, and you know, gain gain a little bit of ground. You know, the third year, uh, and and in a, in a good spot, I think, right now. So hopefully, keep trending as you said in the right direction, and you know, we'll see what happens. I have some time left. Ted Simmons said the stat geeks got him into the Hall of Fame, the analytics guys, and that helps your cause because you were a guy with on base percentages and drew your walks too. Yeah, I, I, I haven't known a lot about the stat side of things. You know, I, I always concentrate on the, the field, the field part of stuff and the field play. And, and as I've learned a little bit about it, you know, I've talked about uh, Ryan Spader, who's big on stats and analytics, and and uh, he's kind of taught me a little bit about the stats. And he's told me that they help me, you know, in a lot of ways that he doesn't need to explain to me, which I appreciate. But you know, I, I was telling Martin again that you know, Joe. Uh, Joe Morgan, I'd sit with Joe Morgan in Cincinnati a little bit when I was there at the end of my career, and, and he put it best where, you know, he said when, when he played or when players play and they're on the field, they know who the Hall of Famers are, that they're playing with and against. And I kind of looked at it that way on the field. You know, you can kind of dissect, you know, longevity is, is a thing, but, you know, who the Hall of Fame guys are. And we haven't looked, we don't look at stats, we didn't look at the analytics of things, but those guys have some pretty good stats and some pretty good <laughs> analytics as it turns out. You know, it's not a stretch for me to say, hey, I think Chipper Jones may be a Hall of Famer, you know, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera. So uh, there's, there's, there's both sides of it, I think.